complicated. Division is a little bit more complicated than adding, subtracting, and multiplying. Um, but it, it's not that bad. Okay? It's really not that bad. So the first case we're going to look at is the simplest case. Dividing by a monomial. Okay? Monomial means a single term. Mono one. Okay? Uh, that's a single term. What we're going to do is we're going to divide each term of the polynomial. Poly meaning many. The many terms uh, expression by the monomial. You're going to simplify your coefficients. You're going to subtract your exponents. And when you do that, it's the top exponent minus the bottom exponent. So that first example there, when we see 18 into the 4 plus 18 in cubed plus 9 n squared divided by 9 n squared, here's what I want you to do. Is I want you to go through and I want you to write over 9 n squared for each and every term here. <clears throat> We're going to divide the coefficients. So that first one, 18 divided by 9, is 2. We subtract the exponents. Top minus bottom. 4 minus 2 is 2, so that's going to leave us with 2 in squared. The next one, we've got 18 divided by 9 again, so we've got plus 2. You bring down the signs. N cubed over N squared, 3 minus 2 is 1. We don't write an exponent of 1, so that's just N. Plus 3 over 9. Now, 3 over 9 does not divide evenly. That's going to give us a fraction. I know that it's 1 third, but let me show you on the calculator how to do it. You do 3 divided by 9. I know it's not going to go evenly because the, to uh, the top is smaller than the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it into a fraction. Okay, and it gives it to me exactly how it needs to be, one-third. And n squared over n squared, 2 minus 2 is 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1. So there's no, those n squares cancel right there. Okay, so that is our final answer. That is that polynomial divided by 9n squared. <clears throat> okay, simple enough, right? Let's look at example 2. We're going to divide each of those terms by 10r squared. So 3 divided by 10, well, top smaller than the bottom again, but 3 and 10 don't have anything in common. That's not going to uh, simplify. So 3 over 10, r cubed over r squared, 3 minus 2 is 1, so that's just 3 over 10 times r. Bring down that plus. 40 divided by 10 is 4. You're welcome to use your calculator on all these. I'm just not. R squared over R squared. Those cancel. Bring down the other plus. 50 divided by 10 is 5. R over R squared. Okay, that's a power of 1 on the top. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Now let's remind ourselves of some properties of exponents. When you have a negative exponent, <clears throat> you can move that to, if it's in the numerator, you move it to the denominator and it becomes a positive exponent. If it's in the denominator, you can move it to the numerator to become a positive exponent. But the key is you can't move the 5. Okay? The 5 doesn't go anywhere. It's just the R that moves. So this would be plus 5 over r. Okay. Now that's different from the very first term because this r for the first term, it's probably better to write it in the numerator with the 3. Okay. You can write it in the numerator with the 3 or you can write it beside the 3 tenths. But either way, um, that first term is different from the last term. Yes, r only has a power of 1. But they are different when R is in the numerator versus when it's in the denominator. Those are two different terms. That's as simplified as that expression will go. Okay? So, before we go any further, there it is. Okay? So you set that binomial equal to zero, you solve for the variable. That should be very simple, like one, maybe two step process. That number goes on what we call the shelf. You'll see what I mean here in a second. Then we're going to list the coefficients of the polynomial beside the shelf. We've got to make sure it's in standard form, and we've got to make sure that nothing is missing. You'll see what I mean here in a second. 
When we get finished with the process, it's hard to describe it in words, so you're, I'm just going to have to show you. But when we finish with the process, we're potentially going to get a remainder. If that remainder is zero, then that binomial is a factor of the polynomial, and the number on the shelf is a root of the polynomial, or it would be an x-intercept. So I'll show you what all that means here, here at the end after we do one. So let's look at this first example. b cubed minus 13b squared plus 29b plus 9 divided by v minus 3. So we take our binomial, and I'm kind of going to do this over to the side. This is my binomial. This is the two-term part. I'm going to set that equal to 0, and I'm going to solve for my variable. So in this case, I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So that says v equals 3. 3 is going to go on, this is my shelf. It's a backwards L. Okay? 3 is going to go on my shelf here. It's backwards L. Beside the shelf, I'm going to list the coefficients of my polynomial. So v cubed, it doesn't have a coefficient. What's it understood to be? 1. So I'm going to put 1. My next one is negative 13. Signs are very important. And make sure you leave a little bit of space. You don't want all your numbers running together here. Uh, v cubed, v squared, v is 29. We don't need to put the plus in front of it. Okay, that's just going to jumble things up. And then our constant is positive 9. We're going to leave about a line of space there. And we're going to draw a line underneath it. Here's what happens. That first coefficient, we bring it down. Then we are going to take that number that's below the line, and we're going to multiply it by the number on the shelf. 1 times 3 is 3. That's going to go in the next blank. And then we're going to add. Negative 13 plus 3 is negative 10. And then we're going to repeat the process. Number below the line, multiplied by the number on the shelf, negative 30, Put it in the next open space, and we're going to add. 29 plus negative 30 is negative 1. I'm going to repeat it again. Negative 1, the number under the line, times the number on the shelf. Negative 3, it goes in the last open space there, and we're going to add. 9 plus negative 3 is 6. That last number is the remainder. Okay, that means that this did not divide evenly. Okay, this did not divide evenly. So our answer looks like this. Our original polynomial was b cubed, so our answer is going to be b squared, v, and then our constant. Okay, you start with the next power down, and you count down from there. So v squared, v, constant, and that's the remainder. So this is what it's going to look like on the answer key. v squared minus 10v minus 1 plus 6 over the divisor, what we divided by. It's like, remember way back when in elementary school, when you did long division, and at the end you had your remainder, and you were supposed to put that number over what you divided by. That was your remainder. Um, so, like, if you divided 10 by 3, you had a remainder of 1. It, 3 goes into 10 three times, a remainder of 1, so it's 3 and 1 third, okay? 1 over what you divide by 3. Same thing here. This is what we got. This was our remainder. We put it over what we divided by. Okay? Um, you can check this, okay? You can check this uh, by plugging into your calculator. Okay, In Y1, you're going to put the original problem. Obviously, use X's instead of B's. And put parentheses exactly where they have parentheses. Okay, so there's my polynomial divided by my binomial. And then in Y2, I'm going to put my answer, x squared minus 10x minus 1 plus 6 over, you've got to put x minus 3 in parentheses. 
Now, if we did it correctly, then our y values should match up in our table, in the W table. And it did. So that means that what we have in y1 is equivalent to what we have in y2, and that's what we want. And we're just expressing this division problem in a different way. Um, so we want them to be the same thing, it's just rewritten. Okay, so that's where you can check this. Okay, that's how you can check this. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. Let's look at number two. n minus 7, n minus 7, we're going to set that equal to 0, and we're going to solve for n, so that means n is positive 7, positive 7 is going to go on our shelf. Okay, n cubed, coefficient of 1, n squared, coefficient of negative 6, n, coefficient of negative 17, constant is 70. First one comes down, the one comes down, then we start the process of multiplying. One times seven is seven, add, okay, negative six plus seven is one, multiply. One times seven is seven, add, negative seventeen plus seven is negative ten, multiply. Negative ten times seven is negative seventy, add, we get zero. Our remainder is zero, so that means that that divided evenly, that means n minus seven is a factor of that polynomial. So our answer is going to look like this. We started with n cubed, so we've got n squared plus n minus 10. There's no remainder, so this is the answer, okay? That is the answer. And we could check it the exact same way. Type in the original problem, type in what we say is the answer, and when we look at the table, they're going to have the exact same y values. That also means, I do want to show you this part too, when we graph, if we graph just this original polynomial, x cubed minus 6x squared minus 17x plus 70, just the polynomial part. When we graph it, it's going to have an x-intercept at positive 7. It has other x-intercepts too, but one of its x-intercepts is positive 7. When I go to the table at positive 7, my y value is 0. Okay? Um, so that's what, but that's also what having a remainder of 0 means. Okay? So 7, the number on the shelf, is an x-intercept or a root of that original polynomial when your remainder is zero. Divides evenly, it's a root, it's an x intercept. Okay? Um, number three, we're going to modify slightly because I forgot um, to put one of these examples in there. So let's throw out the R term, okay? So just mark out the R term because um, I want to show you what happens if you're missing a term what happens when you're missing a term. Okay, so throw out the 49R. Alright, so set R minus 5 equal to 0. Solve for R. So we add 5, R equals 5, 5 goes on our shelf. Let's list the coefficients of our polynomial. R to the fourth was negative, so that's a negative 1. R cubed is 14. R squared is negative 36. We don't have R, so we put a 0. And then our constant is 19. You may think, well, 0 doesn't mean anything. How's that really going to affect my problem? It really does affect your problem. If you don't get it there, if it's missing something, it's going to mess up your answer. Okay, so if you're missing a power, we started with R to the fourth, so we should have R to the fourth, R cubed, R squared, R. And then the constant, we don't have r, so we have to put a 0 in its place. Okay? It doesn't change the synthetic division. We still do it the same way. Bring down the negative 1, multiply, gives us negative 5, <coughs> add. 14 plus negative 5 is 9. Multiply, 9 times 5 is 45. Add, negative 36 plus 45.